now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 7.06. It's O'Connor and Company. Thank you so much for tuning in on a super duper busy but impactful Friday. And we're going to get right to it with a ton of important stories, including Michael Cohen and the Democrats. Very bad, awful, horrible day yesterday in (laughs) New York. It's delightful to see. Uh, But there's more as well coming up at 735. Michael Waltz, Congressman of Florida, who was Mm -hmm. in New York, will give us his firsthand account. 805, the governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin. And then at 835, Brett Bear Fox News Channel. I'm Lawrence (laughs) O'Connor. Alongside Patrice Onwuka. I'm Patty Onwuka today. Patty, hey, Patty. (laughs) We are uh, having a discussion about the uh, formal names versus nicknames. And my theory is that every Lawrence is really a Larry at heart. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Every Patrice is a Patrice. They, she is yeah. not a Patty. I don't know me. any Patrice that we go by Patty <laughs> or Reese. Oh, no. Joining, joining us right now is Sir Thomas Fitton of <laughs> Judicial Watch. There you go. Hey, Tom, uh, this is amazing. First of all, you guys, you, the great work you do at Judicial mm, Watch. Yes. I want to remind everybody, judicialwatch.org, they are the real oversight of the federal government here, no matter who holds the reins of power. And uh, we would know nothing about Hillary Clinton's emails if it weren't for Tom Fitton and Judicial Watch. <laughs> that drop the mic on that. But now you are trying for the public interest to see a very important piece of evidence, the video of Joe Biden's testimony in the classified document special prosecutor investigation. We've seen the transcript, Tom. So why are they telling you what legal basis do they have to tell you and Judicial Watch that, no, you cannot get this video? Yeah, and I don't know if it's a video. I think it's only an audio, uh, Larry. But, oh, really? Um, oh, thank you. I, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I did, yeah. Well, even even more even so. Audio. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the audio is something that obviously should be released under FOIA. And what they're telling us is uh, Joe Biden has privacy, and we can't violate his privacy by releasing something showing the sound of his voice <laughs> in these criminal interviews he had to undergo with special counsel Robert Hur, and, and so we have that battle going on. And then later, well, not later, but since since they told us, nope, you know, you can't get it, it's privacy, uh, you had the assertion of executive privilege to mm. keep that same audio away from Congress and the American people. So it's it's even more extreme in terms of their desperate efforts to hide the audio. But again, this makes this makes think, no sense you, uh, under under both privacy and executive privilege because we have read the transcript. We know the information. And by the way, haven't we all seen the video of Bill Clinton saying it depends on what the definition of the word is is? I, I, clearly, we've seen that video of his testimony. He didn't have a privacy concern or an executive privilege concern. What am I missing, Tom? Well, I, I, you, you, you raised two good points there. And... Um, you know, my understanding of executive privilege typically is it protects um, information and communications by the president in which he sought or received advice. Well, obviously, yeah. it doesn't apply. Right. Uh, or, or, not, or, by the way, in the execution of his duties as president. And by definition, this is about his retaining classified documents before he became president. Hmm. You know, and it makes me think that there's something in the audio we had missed other than the evident embarrassment or p- a political blowback he fears from having it released. Does the transcript show what actually happened in the audio? Mm-hmm. Is it as accurate as we've been led to believe? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but you know, all sorts of questions arise from this desperate effort uh, to keep it away from us. It's, it's so bad that Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, is facing contempt of Congress yeah. for not releasing this audio. Yeah. What's in it that, you know, he, he could be prosecuted. He could pay civil penalties uh, for for uh, failing to produce this audio. Well, it, and he, that Biden would throw him under the bus potentially over it suggests uh, the audio must be very important. 
So, I mean, you you raised, when I first saw this story, I thought, well, Tom, you know, it's the way, it's the president's disposition. It is that we, we would see just how potentially senile, how potentially, you know, just his delivery or his inability to articulate himself, to rem, to forget all of these different uh, memories and recall things. But do you think that maybe there is missing information that these tapes would relieve, that, that the, these tapes would explain? that maybe really wasn't in the written transcript? Is Ooh, that what you're suggesting? Like a cover-up. Maybe. You know, and I, I'm not the one who's hiding the audio, yeah. right? And yeah. and when you come up with crazy reasons to hide something, you know, all bets are off as to, you know, why is it we give them the benefit of the doubt? Why yeah. is it we suppose, should we suppose that the audio is what the transcript told us it is? That's mm-hmm. a great could point. Be all sorts of... It's like there this, could be all the, sorts of background noise and, mm-hmm. and communication and things that maybe the transcript didn't pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, but it could be more dark than that in the sense that the audio is is much more complicated. How about the – let's put that, that Let's put that out there. It's much more complicated wow. than what we get in the transcript. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, hmm. for all we know, this could be a, you know, missing 17 minutes of Nixon White House tapes. I mean, hmm. we, we are 18 and a half minutes, excuse me. We don't know. Yeah, We're just told to take our word for it that this is the transcript. You raise a very important issue, Tom, and this is why the American people do deserve to see something like this or hear something like this. What's the next step? And we step- also need to know why the Justice Department gave President Biden a pass for what the Justice Department has decided was criminal activity. Yes. Right. In the sense that for he Donald willfully, Trump. he had documents he wasn't supposed to have. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, he gets a pass. Biden, Trump doesn't. Mm-hmm. And the Justice Department says, well, it's because his memory was bad or he had plausible defenses. Well, you know, since you raised Donald Trump, they're bending over backwards to protect executive privilege, attorney client privilege, privacy. Last I checked, Donald Trump isn't afforded any of those privileges. He's had to take executive privilege and immunity cases up to the Supreme Court and um, attorney client privilege. Are you kidding me? In Atlanta, his lawyers are being cited in a RICO case for giving him legal advice. So why is it Biden and all of his, that, this president's yeah. men get privilege and protection from the attorney general and Donald Trump is facing criminal trials left and right? It's privilege for me and not for thee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's privacy for me and not for thee. It sure is. Yeah. Raiding, raiding his home. You know, all those sorts of privileges afforded former presidents have been eviscerated by Joe Biden. And and now we're supposed to take seriously this extraordinary assertion of executive privilege. Let's let's be clear here. Hey, Tom, you know what? There is no executive privilege. There's been nothing like executive. No executive privilege like this has ever been asserted before. It's unprecedented. Uh, And, um, you know, my guess is even the contempt of Garland, you know, even if they just said we're not giving you the, the, the video audio and not told them why and came mm-hmm. up with their typical political excuses, um, it might have been a non-news story, practically speaking. Uh, well, it isn't anymore. Not that they've yeah. claimed this privilege. Can, can you hold your thought, Tom? Nixonian privilege. Yeah. Tom, Tom Fitton, uh, can, do you have a couple of minutes? we uh, we got to take a quick traffic stop but I sure. want because I want to keep asking you about this. And mm-hmm. also – The legal question here, because Merrick Garland basically is making this decision based on politics, not based on the law. And and they're admitting to that, basically. Um, But I also want to talk to you about the Trump trial up in New York as well. So uh, Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch, stays with us at 715 WMAL. A ton of news broke today. I've got the up to the minute details for you on the next Vince Colonnay show, three to six, right here on WMAL. All right. We're back with Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch. We're talking with Tom about wrapping up the conversation about uh, the Biden uh, White House trying to assert executive privilege over the recordings from the classified uh, documents probe. So, Tom, just to to kind of put a, a bow on this, what happens next? Well, either the House, assuming the contempt, I don't think the House is fully approve the contempt. The House will have to enforce the contempt on its own by going to court to try to get the documents or presumably or the Justice Department will have to prosecute Garland. So Garland will have to prosecute himself for contempt. Uh, so we know how that's going to work. Yeah. Uh, so the process is going to be slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the in the meantime, we have our FOIA lawsuit for the same record, at least yes. the audio portion. And the government's response is due May 31st. And we're supposed to you know, finish the the papers on that, you know, the back and forth as to 
um, why we should get the documents, you know, by by uh, by the end of July. Either way, we're going to have to wait, and and even if we win, there could be appeals and such. So right. this is a this is a significant slowdown of the process. And of course, you know, President Biden can waive executive privilege. He can look at the. Let's say he had a credible reason for asserting it. It's not required. That's There's right. a balancing test, and it's like you know what what's the harm to the executive branch by releasing an audio of an interview everyone has a transcript of well, and that's the I irony don't have Tom. privacy yeah. I don't have privacy but you know he could say look I I may technically have privacy but I I understand the public has an interest in hearing how I responded given the concerns about my presidency and my ability to serve yes. here's the audio and I want and the, the American people Anybody, he should be out there saying, I want the American people to see how, that I'm at the top of my game <laughs> and that my performance in this deposition was mischaracterized yes. and there was no lapse of memory or anything. And Robert Hur is the partisan hack we've been calling him. So I want the America. In fact, I'm going to deliver these to Tom Fitton's office personally. <laughs> You're going to get the, the, the beast is going to roll up in front of your office there at Judicial Watch. Tom, you ready? Well, that's well, that's. That's what I would have done. That's what yes. I would do. I think that's a great <laughs> political uh, advice you're giving him as well, in addition to the the, the legal um, consequences that, you know, Garland, by the way, you know, he could be, in theory, prosecuted, you know, not if obviously not now, but maybe in the next administration. Mm. Statute of limitations is it going to run, Yeah, unlike what's happening in New York. So let's turn to what's happening in New York, because, you know, uh, President Trump is under this ridiculous gag order. The defendant, the man who stands accused and where the full power and weight and authority of the government is coming down to to take his rights away and put him behind bars. And he's not allowed to publicly speak yes. about the charges against him. But what he's taken to doing now is quoting other people, <laughs> which is brilliant. And well, listen to what he said yesterday. Tom Fitton, the Biden Democratic Party sham and the sham trial and other abuses of Trump are an international scandal that harms America. And it really does. It really harms America. It's from Tom Fitton. Our country's reputation is a shining city on the hill. It's tarnished now by political persecution of Trump. There you go, Tom. You've been uh, quoted <laughs> there by the president. Uh, but most importantly, beyond the president quoting you, is you're 100 percent right about this trial and what's happening. Yeah, I mean, we have the 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 Democratic Party judge by donor hijacking the presidential campaign of Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not only Trump who's gagged. The campaign is effectively gagged as Cohen attacks Trump. Stormy Daniels attacks Trump. He can't push back against these witnesses publicly, as would be the ordinary course in a campaign. He's being held as a political hostage up there. We're down up to week five of that. It will be week six next. And Cohen's testimony further demonstrates that there was never any evidence that was credible mm -hmm. that Trump committed any crime. And, we, and I'm sure you've had guests who've educated your listeners many times as to why there's no there there. But, you know, to put a bow on what Cohen did, it's clear he's a liar mm -hmm. uh, by his own admission. So it's not even a controversy. And it's clear even if he were telling the truth about what Trump did and what he did for Trump, it wouldn't be a crime. Mm. And, and what an abuse. What an yeah. abuse. And, and I tell you, uh, the elections have already been compromised as far as I'm concerned. And the question is, will the abuse and interference in our election um, result in an election that is the result of which is changed as a result of the interference? Yeah. But there's no question there's been interference. You can't have a former a, the leading presidential candidate held hostage in a courtroom for five weeks yeah. and say that doesn't have an impact on the campaign. Well, and, and Tom, point. you know, but the, 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 bot, the baseline here, the bottom line is the jury. And I, I mean, we all, even CNN analysts and hosts yesterday were, you know, were holding, taking off their glasses and wiping their face, their heads, because <laughs> their their star boy, Michael Cohen, has been exposed as a liar, which everyone knew. But do you think that the jury, that there will be one person on the jury willing to to put aside their Trump um, angst and, and anger if they're if they all have that? Maybe they don't. But will there be one person who's willing to say, even I can't stand up for this? Do you think it will be more than one juror? Maybe, maybe. I think the, you know, going into this trial, I think many people fairly predicted that there wouldn't be. 
Uh, but but now it looks like there may be a hung jury, or given all the evidence, mm-hmm. assuming there's one honest man or woman on the jury on the jury that there there will be a hung jury at the least. Uh, who knows? Maybe he'll even get acquitted. Uh, you know, mm. I think the chances are slim. It used to be slim to none. Now they're slim. <laughs> they'll get acquitted completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but either way, it's a terrible abuse. Even if it ends in a hung jury or acquittal. This never should have happened. And if yes. justice prevails, people like Bragg are going to lose their bar license for what he did here. And yeah. he should be under criminal investigation over the abuse of office to, to, to violate the civil rights of Trump under the color of law. 100%. Judicial Watch is Tom so much, Fitton. Tom. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Could you stay out of the news for crying out loud? <laughs> I mean, give other people a chance. Well, the, the truth, the truth. The truth shall set you free, and, and President Trump sees, and understands it when he sees it. There you go. Good for him. Veritas, my friend. Have a good weekend. <laughs> okay, thank Thanks, you, guys. Tom Fitton. Thanks, Tom Can we? It, you mentioned the CNN, you know, wiping their brows and taking off Can their glasses. Can we play a clip? Just a little bit. Sure. Just a quickie. Just to, this is CNN reacting to Michael Cohen uh-huh. getting trapped in a lie yesterday in the court. Michael Cohen was, was cornered in what appeared to be a... Uh, a lie. I don't think I've ever seen a star cooperating witness get his knees chopped out quite as clearly and dramatically as what just happened with Michael Cohen. This does seem pretty bad, though. I, this this does seem, I, I feel like there are a lot of questions that have been raised. I think a, a, if I was a juror in this case watching that, I would think this guy's making this up as he's going along. It's just amazing. <laughs> it's so good. It's 724. <laughs> Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 736. It's O'Connor and Company this Friday morning in the nation's capital. Thanks so much for tuning in here as we get you where you need to go with everything you need to know. And hopefully a smile on your face. That's right. And maybe your toe tapping a little bit. It's always Patrice on Wuka's Day where we bring out the (laughs) funk. Coming up at 8.05, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin will be our guest. We'll see if – I don't think we're going to bring out bring him in with funk. Oh, we should have something more uh, uh, he's, he's presidential. Got his own, he's got his own song. Oh, presidential <laughs> for the governor. Interesting. 8.35, <laughs> Brett Fair. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Patrice Anwuka. Patrice, yes. my favorite story involving congressmen yesterday had to do with the, what can only be described as the cat fight. In the Senate hearing room. Can we say cat fight? Sure we can. Okay. Marjorie Taylor Greene um, uh, speaking to uh, Congresswoman Crockett, was it? Yes. Uh, about her fake eyelashes. Yeah. AOC jumping in, <laughs> calling MTG baby girl, and just the screaming that occurred. Oh, it was, it was amazing it's fantastic. to watch. We are going to get to that story in a moment. That's our favorite congressional story. Our second favorite is is a little more dignified. Congressman Mike (laughs) Waltz of Florida, uh, who joins us now. Congressman Waltz, I understand you uh, had a little bit of a field trip yesterday. Yeah, we did. Uh, But it was it was quite the arc to go from uh, watching Cohen get caught lying on the stand Hmm. To uh, watching Marjorie Taylor Greene and AOC duke it out as we try to hold uh, Merrick Garland in contempt. You had a busy day. Well, let's day on Capitol Hill. Let's start with the happenings in Manhattan because you got to see firsthand. And 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 what's interesting to me is if you have any criticism of the witness, Mr. Cohen, or of the prosecutor, Mr. Bragg, or of the judge in the case, which is your constitutional right to express those criticisms, it's remarkable to me that the defendant in the case, Mr. Trump, can't. He's not allowed to express those criticisms. Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's unconstitutional. And obviously, it's it's just blatantly political. So we went up there to say the things that uh, he can't say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. one of them is just astounding to me because just to set the scene in florida uh, our judges there are so careful are so focused on being viewed by the public as Mm -hmm. objective figures they literally won't take a photo next to a politician i have one a judge that's married to a county commissioner won't go to events with him uh, just uh, out of concern there but now we have a judge in new york whose daughter is making hundreds of thousands Mm. fundraising off of this event, he has contributed directly to campaigns. Uh, And look, I mean, the thing that jumped out to me was I've served in countries where, you know, it's kind of assumed as part of their political system in South America and Africa and elsewhere that 
you know, if, if things go the wrong way for you as a politician, you're going to go to jail. You yeah. know, the other side sends the other side to jail, weaponizes judges, weaponizes judicial system. And mm. I'm sitting there thinking, are, are we going to become Venezuela? Mm. Uh, it, it was uh, let's hope not. But yeah. this is the road that I mean, this is the road we're going down. Well, Congressman, um, it, it's so interesting. One of your colleagues in the in the Senate um uh, Senator Mitt Romney apparently put out a little bit of a statement, and he called. He said the parade of GOP leaders are a little bit embarrassing. Um, you, you all uh, going out to New York City, he quote said, "I think it's a little demeaning to show up in front of the courthouse, particularly one where we're talking about an allegation of paying a porn star." What would you say to your colleague, <laughs> Senator Romney? Yeah, well, Senator Number One. President Trump doesn't need anyone to go speak for him uh, on any given day. But in this case, uh, he does for a case that shouldn't have ever been brought, that Alvin Bragg's predecessors decided shouldn't have been brought. I mean, Cy Vance, his predecessor, Mm. wasn't exactly – I mean, he's a political operative. Uh, Himself, he didn't bring it. So when you have an unconstitutional uh, lawfare and election interference going on, then actually – I couldn't disagree more. We all need to be speaking out mm. right now because the genie that the, the Democrats and, and uh, Alvin Bragg are letting out of the bottle uh, is going to be so devastating, I think, uh, to this country in the future if we don't nip it in the bud. And number two, just real quick, yeah, watching uh, the uh, Biden's number three in his Department of Justice, mm-hmm. number three official in Biden's DOJ, sitting there in the courtroom – helping the prosecution yeah. just feed away from the man that is ahead of Biden in the polls. To me, if that doesn't say at all right there that yeah. this is being run and directed out of the White House, and I guess he came down to, to make sure that this doesn't go the road that it went with Fannie Willis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know why, right, you know why he parachuted in, uh-huh. but – you know, to, to see the puppet strings sitting right there in front of you was, mm. was also pretty stunning. That is an important point that needs to be re- yes. reiterated daily, yes. that this is the number three guy in America on the Justice Department who stepped away to go and, and assist in this prosecution. And why that doesn't bother Mitt Romney mm-hmm. more than you, Congressman, going up and actually witnessing this trial is a little disturbing in and of itself. You mentioned Michael Cohen having a very awful day <laughs> in court yesterday uh, where he was trapped in a lie. We've detailed this a couple of times, but tell me what part of the I don't know if you saw all of it but what did you see and what was your assessment of the mood in the room in terms of the jury because I'm hearing more and more reports of people saying that a hung jury is looking more likely now based on sort of telepathically trying to read what the jury is doing in reaction well I'll tell you uh you know Todd Blanche is very methodical uh, I could kind of see why the president might have been dozing off a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he really kind of step by step. But but the other side of that, I'd forgotten how much Cohen had blatantly lied. I'd forgotten about an intel committee committee hearing, uh, you know, during the Russia, Russia, Russia uh, hoax, mm. where he had lied to the committee. Then later on, he lies to his lawyer about lying. Uh, then he pleads guilty to the judge, but then he lies about the guilty plea. Uh, and then later on in all his podcasts and books and CNN appearances, then kind of completely tries to whitewash the story. I mean, it was literally just lie upon lie upon lie. And and, uh, and so Blanche remind, walked the jurors through all of those and made him say, yep, mm-hmm. I lied there. Yep, I lied there. Well, may, he tried to say things like, well, maybe that was untrue. Blanche would step in. So it was a lie. Yes, that was a lie to do. <laughs> uh, but the part that kind of, you know, so we're kind of all lulled into. And the part where we all snapped to, including the president, was he had him walk through this conversation that, that Cohen claimed he had with the president, mm-hmm. where he kind of closed the loop on what he claimed was election interference with this hush money payment mm-hmm. that he had just testified Tuesday. But what he didn't apparently realize, Cohen didn't realize, is he had texted beforehand and after about what the conversation was about, yeah. Yeah. which was about being har- getting harassing phone calls. And then Cohen tried to kind of recover and say, no, no, but I talked about the hush money payments, too, in addition to that. 
Yeah. And Blanche pulled up the record. Okay, you got all of that done in a 90-second photo. <laughs> which, by the way, oh. passed through Trump's bodyguard before it even got to the president. I yeah. mean, it was yeah. it was a it was a it was a Perry Mason moment. Oh. And once again, Cohen was, and all of the ju- and all of the jurors were 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 absolutely dialed in. We all were uh, at that point. It was brilliant, brilliant on uh, Blanche's part. What a moment! What a moment! And and I know how devastating it was because. We've been playing the audio of oh, CNN yeah. and MSNBC reacting to it all day. They're falling and apart over it's, there. It's honestly, it's quite satisfying. Congressman Mike Waltz of Florida on the Armed Services Committee. It's always great uh, talking with you, sir. Thanks, Thanks for joining for us. Thank you. It's 745. Okay. And we've had a lot of big news today. Yes. Trump trial going imploding. Michael yeah. Cohen falling apart. Uh, all this Justice stuff. Justice Department uh, trying to show Biden all that. Oh, Harris yeah. running for governor. All that stuff. Uh-huh. But you've got the big story of the day. I do. I mean, Vic- this really is this this changes everything. Victoria Secret. Yes. Back with the runway show. This is huge because remember, this was a cu- culturally iconic, That's right. beautiful model. And they took it lingerie away from us. <laughs> and pop stars all in one stage. Yes. And so, you know, it, it took a, a hiatus in 2019. People were not watching it anymore. Because of the Me Too movement. Well, yeah, it was the, around the Me Too movement. Yes. And then, and thankfully, you know what? When all this inclu- body inclusivity stuff started popping up, mm-hmm. I would not want to see Lizzo coming down the runway. I'm nor, just nor Dylan Mulvaney for that. Nor matter. Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. I so, but hopefully. Any Victoria's Secret lingerie to accommodate his apparatus. Well, they are back. V- Victoria's Secret is back with a f- runway show, uh-huh. and some of our iconic models um, are going to be back. Naomi Campbell, uh, who else is here? Some of those big name models sure. who okay. probably are still in fantastic shape right yeah. now. Um, but this is this is important uh, because it me it is it is, it is right. well it is a signal that the cultural in- body inclusivity and all of that garbly goop yes. has hurt that company. They're they're getting back right. to their roots. Clearly, this is because they're not selling as much lingerie as they used exactly. to. Exactly, and they're trying to dr- they're trying to drum back up more interest in their brand. Yep. And so, this is the way to do it. We'll see pop stars again, like you know, in the past, Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, all those folks. Uh, well, you know, Jay Z. At the time, they said they did this because they wanted to evolve their messaging. To be we more, saw as what as they said. did when they evolved their messaging. Here's what I'm not clear about: if Four years ago, mm-hmm. doing the Victoria's Secret runway model show with beautiful women dressed mm-hmm. in lingerie and the angel wings and all that stuff. Yeah. If that was disrespectful, demeaning, and objectifying of women, what changed? How is it not now <laughs> demeaning and objectifying of women? It's still the same. Of it's just it that is. people don't care about me, too. And remember yesterday, I was on to talk about here, uh, you know, just in a federal agency okay. where. Uh, me too, the harassment, FDIC. all that's FDIC, things mm-hmm. like that don't matter. So I think w- the big story, bottom line, the Victoria's Secret runway show is back. Yeah, that's my bottom line. 754.